Section 2. Dennett Champions Mary. Dennett attacks the spurious sense of obviousness as a great obstacle to progress in understanding consciousness. He says it's, quote, the most natural thing in the world to think of consciousness as occurring in some sort of Cartesian theatre and to suppose that there is nothing really wrong with this way of thinking, end quote. But, he claims, this obviousness disappears if you look carefully and in detail at the brain's actual activities and try to imagine an alternative to this simplistic model of consciousness. Dennett compares this with learning how a stage magician performs conjuring tricks. He says, quote, Once we take a serious look backstage, we discover that we didn't actually see what we thought we saw on stage. The huge gap between phenomenology and physiology shrinks a bit we see that some of the obvious features of phenomenology are not real at all. There is no no filling in with figment. There are no intrinsic qualia. There is no central font of meaning and action. There is no magic place where the understanding happens. In fact, there is no Cartesian theatre we still have plenty of amazing phenomena to explain, but a few of the most mind-boggling special effects just don't exist at all, and hence require no explanation, end quote. To defend his position on Mary's knowledge, Dennett returns to the Rosenberg's torn jello box. Imagine, he suggests... An imposter were to show up with a matching piece that was not the original. Intuitively, most people would regard this as impossible. However, Dennett claims it's not impossible, just difficult. As long as the imposter had all the information required to reconstruct the torn jello box. Dennett then adds that, quote, Mary had enough information in the original case, if correctly imagined, to figure out just what her red detectors and blue detectors were, and hence to identify them in advance. Not the usual way of coming to learn about colours. But Mary is not your usual person, end quote. It seems to me, and I suspect most other people, that Dennett is making, perhaps willfully, a fundamental mistake about certain obvious facts about human experience. Namely, the difference between knowing something intellectually and having an immediate personal experience of it. I feel that Dennett is getting away with a lot in his analysis of this story precisely because our knowledge of colour and our qualic experience of colour are hard to disentangle and so are easily confused. But what if we choose to consider this thought experiment having substituted the experience of extreme pain instead of the experience of seeing colours. To take this extreme example, let's rewrite the Mary thought experiment, though this time substituting for the calm, neutral experience of seeing colour, the extreme experience of receiving a severe electric shock. We could imagine a medical student researching every aspect of this event from a neurophysiological point of view. 
he or she might finally understand in exquisite detail all of the neural processes which a normal human being would experience during this event. But would this knowledge enable the student to feel the same pain as the person who is actually in the process of receiving a severe electric shock? Dennett might object that we don't as yet have anywhere near a complete knowledge of the neurology neurological processes involved. But let's make this a thought experiment and imagine that at some point in the distant future we do acquire a complete knowledge of this. My point is as follows. Would any amount of intellectual knowledge of these processes make the student howl in pain? Dennett's championing of Mary's knowledge is, of course, part of his philosophical denial of the reality of qualia. He's arguing here from a cognitivist point of view. So what can we learn about cognitivism from Dennett's response to this thought experiment? The principal lesson is, I think, that, as above, Dennett does not make a distinction between knowledge or information and experience or feeling. All operations in the brain and all products of those operations are conducted in or take the form of information processing. In cognitivism, the term information processing means the manipulation of physical symbols in the brain by means of algorithmic rules and resulting in the deduction of logical inferences. That's why, according to cognitivism, Mary learns nothing new about colour. She's already processed all the information and made all the right inferences. This cognitivist way of seeing brain function is closely linked to the idea that the brain is very similar to and amounts to nothing more than a digital computer.